right, and welcome to this edition of the Queer Profits Podcast, where we dive into topics and issues nobody else seems to want to talk about. We talk about things in the world, we talk about things socially, and we talk about things in specific to your business. Queer Profits is all-inclusive. Everyone is welcome, and by that I mean everyone. So if you've ever felt like you didn't fit in or you were a little out of place, you found your place. Um, in today's episodes, I'm going to be talking to Michael Testa, and uh, I think this is going to be a good one. So, of course, as always, we will include our three pillars, which are inclusion, community, and growth. So with no further ado, I'm actually really excited to, uh, to be talking to Michael. So, Michael, just say hello, introduce yourself, and tell us whatever it is that you would like for us to know about you. Uh, my name is Michael Testa. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I am a divorced father of two sons, and my sons are now 27 and 25. I divorced their mother in 2001, so it's been quite a few years. Um, I am a small business owner. I own an IT consulting firm here in Pittsburgh, which I've had that for 24 years. And in 2014, after a, about a three-year project, I wrote a book called When Opposites No Longer Attract, and the book was written with the purpose of helping people like myself who have been divorced, who have children, some that don't have children, um, understand and, 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 and be of assistance to people that think that, you know, if they're in a situation where they are in a straight marriage and they need to come out, that there is a way to do it with dignity and respect for yourself and your spouse and your family members. But in the end, it's something that you probably should do for your own mental health. Great. So this is an interesting topic because I, so let me ask you this question, because this is the first thing that, that popped up when, when you and I were sort of introduced and we're talking about doing this, which is, do you think that, that people marrying and then either then realizing or already knowing that they're gay or, or whichever the case may be, do you think that's more common in people who are say 45 and above than it is in the younger generation where, you know, there's a lot more um, examples of, you know, queer relationships and that sort of thing in the public eye and TV and all of that. It's a little more, certainly more quote accepted, if you will, now than it was, you know, when we were younger. Do you think it's a generational thing? I, I think it's, it's interesting you asked that question because I have been really paying attention as of late at the ages of the people that I'm meeting who are coming out. And it, from, from my observation, and I say this is not a scientific study, it's just merely an observation, it seems to be that age has not a whole lot to do with it. Hmm. I think now, if you're in a more urban area and a more progressive area, it, it may be happening less. But I still think that in our society, and if you look at just politics and, you know, um, conservative ver versus progressive. There is a lot of areas in the United States that aren't as far advanced in LGBT rights and laws as other places. So this is where societal norms take over in that if you're you know, getting married and you find yourself in this situation, there are certain places that you live that it would be much more difficult to come out or be treated fairly. So the answer to your question is, it is all over the place still. I think the older you get though, the more you realize that in your mental health state, that sometimes you're willing to take the chance because you just can't take it anymore as far as you know the mental challenge that it occurs. And also, you know, at what point in time do you say to yourself, at what age do I really wanna be authentic to myself and the people around me? Because mm -hmm you know, there is that bell that goes off that says, you know, I have now crossed the line. And, you know, younger people, they do see more progressive thoughts or they share more progressive thoughts and more progressive ways. But again, still, it's like where you live, I think that really dictates that answer to that question. So the long of the short is it's going to be a different age, but I think based upon where you live. You know, it's interesting that you said that because one of the things that I often talk about on the podcast with guests is this whole idea of, you know, those of us who live in larger cities, right, and in, in more urban areas, um, I think we do have this concept that 
our reality is the reality everywhere. And that's right. in fact, not the case. I grew up in very rural Ohio on a 75 acre farm. And I actually was just back there a couple of weeks ago for my, dare I say, my 40 year high school reunion. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, it was interesting because it, it, while there is certainly a different attitude about some things, some things is still very closed minded and very small townish and very rural, if you will. And so I've had a lot of conversations with guests about you know, we're spoiled when we live in places like Atlanta or San Francisco or, you know, Denver or Orlando or Miami or wherever, pick a big city. You know, we have this idea that everybody has these same advantages and the same ability to sort of, you know, be out and stretch the limits a little bit. And, you know, that, that we have when in fact, in rural U U U.S. of A, pick any state, it's very, very different than what we deal with in, in these bigger cities, I think. And, and I think sometimes we as a community, because we tend to be a little more focused in some of those big cities, you know, we forget about that. Yeah. And it, it's it, in, in if, you know, reading online, <clears throat> excuse me, I belong to a couple of Facebook pages, uh, reading the plight of some of these people whose family members, once they find out they're gay and they're married, like they it's it's torturous it really is torturous for them and i recommend that they you know seek therapists but how do you find a therapist that's lgbt friendly in a rural town you know it, sometimes it's hard to find one who's an lgbt therapist in an urban town because things aren't denoted it's it takes work and referrals and and trying the the you know the the person out if you like them don't like them you know it's just it, it's it's a lot of you know, basically potluck to get yourself where you need to be. And it takes some work. And sometimes people just don't have the mental stability to do that. Yeah. So what, um, so let's talk about, did you know that you were gay when you married your wife, your ex, your former wife? I, I did not. And in fact, there's some passages in the book that I, I, I talk about that specifically. And, you know, I still don't understand to myself, like how, you know, how younger people know when they're younger that they're gay and they say well i'm gay well you know like when i was younger i was like i just wanted to know who i was going to go out and play with like <laughs> to get into that level of understanding oneself it's and i i believe people do people are more in touch with themselves younger in life i wasn't one of those people yeah. and in my book a lot of us say the same thing and and going back to your question earlier the average age in my book of people coming out was 36 or 37 like in that spot so, and I do see a lot of people that come to realize that, you know, at, at that age that you're approaching 40, what do you do now? But more recently I was out and met a gentleman who was 27 years old who just left his wife. So again, going back to that question, like, well, how old are you? There's no specific age. Right. It's just an, an personal evolution for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's very interesting that you said that too about, about, you know, I just wanted to go out and play because I'm the same way. Like I had no, now looking back, I can say that I always felt different. I, I never quite felt like I fit in. I was always, you know, there's always something a little different, but, you know, growing up on a farm and being an athlete, not having, it's funny because we talked about this at the reunion. Um, the kids who live sort of in town were talking about the trouble that they got into. And I'm, I'm, I'm laughing inside. And, and I finally said, you know, it's interesting to me that, you know, you guys, all could jump on your bike or you could sneak out of your house at night and sneak back in and, and yeah. meet at the McDonald's or whatever. I was, I couldn't even ride my bike somewhere to get into trouble. You know, <laughs> I mean, we were, you know, five miles to the closest anything, you know, I was a, I was, I was a full mile to the closest stop sign, you know? Um, so it's just, it's interesting, you know, that, that whole piece of, of, you know, same thing. Like I, you know, I was studying and playing sports and that's what I thought about and didn't really yeah. have, you know, any inkling of anything until, you know, college. Yeah. Um, so, so you, so you get married, you, 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 you know, you start a family, you, you, you know, you, you go through that process of building the traditional, as we would say, you know, life that we all, you know, I think a lot of us anyway, when we're kids think we're going to have. Um, and so then what happens? What happens? <laughs> I, I guess that, you, you start to evolve personally. And, you know, we all do evolve personally, mentally, physically as we get older and come to terms with things that maybe we've put aside in our head, like, oh, that was a fleeting thought. 
then that fleeting thought of, well, I find some guy attractive. It used to, I used to think that I just wanted to look like them. You know, that's how I made sense of it that, you know, well, that's a very good looking man. He's got a lot of women hanging off him. What do I need to do to look like that? Or why don't I look like that? And then as, as I matured and as my thought process matured, I began to, began to realize that it was a little bit more than that. And, and as that went along, um, you know, my marriage was not really the greatest marriage in the world. It wasn't with the person that, you know, I could sit down and say, hey, I, you know, I got this stuff going on. That wouldn't have ever been the case and ended up being the reality. It wouldn't have been the case because it was not. But, you know, different people that uh, friends of mine have had different experiences with their spouses. Some of their spouses were like, oh, I kind of knew that, but, you know, I just wondered and, you know, kind of nonchalantly talked about it because they were dealing with people that were a little bit easier to, to talk with and understand life isn't just the same every day. As we grow older, you know, our thoughts and our, our, our likes and dislikes change as we go. And, you know, as we evolve in, in understanding ourselves better, which, which really is sometimes a science in itself of understanding yourself, um, then I started to go to therapy. So a lot of the stuff that I was putting down and not understanding, you know, we started talking about it in therapy. And then, you know, once you start talking about it, it's like you basically let the cat out of your own bag because you're like, wow, that is really what I've been thinking about. But, but when you don't have anybody to talk to about it, you don't know what the reality is. And I would say, I would have these thoughts that literally would smack up the, ins the, the inside of my head, my like inside of my skull that would never get out. And when they started to get out, like everything started, was like, you know, rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, you know, we're going down. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you know, this is just now your thought process changes when first, you know, first and foremost, you realize you're not alone. And when you realize you're not alone, and then when you're, when you realize that, and then you start like online, you know, people talk about everything back then when I was on, there was really no quote online to reach out, but it began to, to online began to become bigger. And I was able to reach out to people and realize that there are a lot of people in my shoes out there doing the same thing, having the same issues, you know, some with kids, some without kids. Uh, some with spouses that are really easy to talk to and work it out and some that, that were not. So, you know, but again, once that thought leaves your head and someone else confirms it or you confirm it with somebody else, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. So, you know, I, it's, it's an interesting, the thing that popped into my head as you were talking about that was, you know, we all go through our own quote coming out process, right. And, and uh, whether you do it at 22 or 42 or 82, you know, it's, I think it's the same, it's, it's that same thing, right? We get inside of our heads and, and we get stuck there and we forget that there are other people who may have had the same experience or other people who can help us or whatever. And we, we go through that whole process of, you know, whatever the steps are. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist and I don't play one on TV and I'm not a therapist, but you know, that, that piece of, you know, it's only me and then, oh my gosh, I'm being scared. And then, you know, everything that, that goes on. And so add to that now a spouse and now children in your case. I mean, that had to have just added to the stress and the, the, the process that you went through to try to work, work this out in your own head. Yeah, it was, it was a long process. I still have some things that of guilt that I still have to work out in my head. And, you know, why didn't I know this sooner? Why did I do that? Why, why did I go ahead and get married? And, you know, in, in, you know, when you look at it, it's, it's societal norms that you knew talked about this a little earlier, you know, you grow up, you, you, you meet, some people meet their, their loved one in high school, some meet them in college, some meet them, you know, out at bars, however you meet someone, but it's, it's when you're not exposed to an alternative, and I hate to even use that word, but a different lifestyle, or you're not exposed to, and you grew up on a farm, I grew up in practically a farm area. There weren't that many people that were, um, you know, doing anything different other than just the societal norms of meeting, getting married, having kids, setting up your little house, you know, like all those things that, you know, fairy tales tell you, you know, right. there aren't very many fairy tales that tell you about, oh, you might be gay. Right. And so, you know, we're, we're wired to believe those things are the right things to do. 
And it's not like that what we do is, is finding out we're gay is not the right thing to do, but it's not something that you see every day in society that has, has a, a cartoon about it or you know, anything that may help you understand why you're different or what you're thinking about is different. So we kind of have to write our own playbook. And that's a little scary sometimes. And when you don't think that you have the knowledge or the, the information to write the playbook, the playbook just sits there. It doesn't do anything. You're not gonna, you're not gonna write a play about something you know nothing about. You could try, but it's all only in your own imagination. It's not been confirmed by others. Right, right. So interestingly, one of the, the, the things I'm sitting here thinking about right now is, is this piece of, you know, so do you think that you were always gay and you just didn't recognize it? Or do you think that over time, you know, sexuality is on sort of a, you know, a continuum and, and things move and, you know, as time goes on, where do you think that that piece of, of this plays in? I, I don't think. To say that I was gay is, is again, you're trying to like one or zero this. And we all know that that's not true. We're not all one or zero. So for me and, and my friends, it was an evolution process. It was an evolution process of, of um, you know, traditionally you just, you're, you're straight traditionally. All right. And it, as the evolution process occurred and I was, you know, parsing out my own thoughts and like, what is that? You know, why do I think I want to look like that guy who's very handsome and, you know, fit and all the things that, you know, we all kind of look at up to those, you know, athlete type people just to put it in a, in a in something, a thought that people could envision right now. Like it, it was, it was just that. And then as time went on and then with the advent of the internet, where I talked to other people that were like me, then I realized that, well, maybe maybe I was gay, but not really, because I didn't have a problem with being with women. I have no problem with women, even to today. Um, it's just not where I, you know, ended up going. So, so it is a fluid, and, and even when we talk about gender now, and gender being fluid, and, you know, is it LGBTQIA, and all the different, you know, acronyms we're coming up with, it's, I think that, in our own lives, everything's an evolution and your sexuality can also be an evolution. I don't know very many people who came out as gay and then went back and, and go back into the closet. I know a few, but most people, once they've come to terms with who they are, you know, they stay with that. And um, I just think it's, it's the answer to that question, and I talk a lot sometimes, is just purely evolutionary. It is evolutionary and understanding yourself better. Well, and you know, it's interesting that you said that about like, I don't have a problem with women. I think that's one of the, one of the, the myths, right? Is that, you know, gay men hate women and lesbians hate men. You know, that's, that's not it, right? I mean, to yeah. me anyway, I've never had an issue with, matter of fact, funny story, years ago, there's a um, Bob Paris and his partner at the time, whose name now I can't remember, but they're bodybuilders. And uh, Herb Ritz, I believe, is, is who did the photography, had put together this beautiful photo book of the two of them and um, together and separate. And, you know, I was doing a lot of bodybuilding and stuff at the time. And uh, there's a Brush Strokes, which is a, a, a gay store here in Atlanta. I called and asked if they had the book. And they said, yeah. And so I went in and, and bought the book. And when I walked in, the guy looked at me funny. And I said, you know, I just called about having, whether you guys had this or not. And uh, he said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He said, are you a lesbian? I said, yeah. And he said, what do you want this book for? And it was very interesting because I looked at him and I said, well, what does being a lesbian have to do with wanting or not wanting this book? And he goes, well, you know what? You're not attracted to men. I'm like, no, but that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate a beautiful body and a man's yeah. chiseled. You know, it was just very interesting, the paradigm that he had based on his experience and, and, you know, whatever. And I was, you know, I was just shocked by it. So uh, it's interesting that sometimes, you know, we have those, those, those things that we think that aren't necessarily true. I mean, I, you know, a body is a body and when it's chiseled like that, it, it's, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful art piece to me. So. Right. Uh, and in, and even going back to the evolution of, of our minds, it's also the evolution of people just like you mentioned who have a certain one or zero way of thinking about who 
you know, the LGBT community is. Right. And they inside think, of our own community. Right. They think that, oh, you're a lesbian. You're not going to find that to be, you know, interesting right. to you. I'll use the word interesting, not necessarily attracted to, but interested in. So, you know, everything has been, it has, a, has evolved to where it is now. But, you know, at, with the advent of marriage, um, which happened in 2015, you know, we've got six years of gay people getting married. And if you look online now and you see friends or acquaintances that you you see getting married, it's like picking up somewhat of a, oh, okay, that's kind of normal now. And you'll see the entire family, both sides of the family, you know, at the wedding and you'll see them dancing or, you know, some people post that they did a dance, you know, the, the grooms or the brides, they, they, they you know, they, they practiced some dance and did that. So it's now becoming more of a societal norm, not necessarily in the rural areas, but it is taking root. So more people are now being, um, uh, are witnessing this type of, of new, but very welcomed um, evolution. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the process of sort of, you know, going through this and, and making the realization and then dealing with, you know, separating out, you know, and, and, and talking to the kids and the, and the, the former wife and in, in that process. Well, a lot of that never really happened. And I had a therapist one time that I said, well, how do I do this? And she says, you know, like if I start dating somebody, how do I introduce that person to my family? And, and she basically simplified it. She says, just show up. You know what? Just show up because then you've already normalized the just showing up because it's the moment that you start uh, making it a bigger deal and making it what they think it should be, then that's the moment you've stepped back and not taken charge of what's happening. And with my sons, they were so young that that, you know, and, and I still like it's, we still haven't really had like these conversations, but it just, it is so that I'm gay. They have met people that I've dated. I had one gentleman I lived with for a while. When I first came out, we met six months after I came out. So we live with him and, you know, I have a very good relationship with my sons. It, it, again, it's not like you talk about if you're straight and have a girlfriend, you know, it's just so. And, you know, if there's anything that they want to ask or anything they're curious about, then I'm open to talk about it. But I don't make it like something that it's something different. It's just who I am. Yeah. Um, and as far as my ex-wife, we never really had a great uh, talking relationship. So here we are 20 years later, whatever, since divorce and you know, it's kind of basically status quo in that department. But, you know, there's enough years that have passed that all that has settled down and we've just moved on in our lives. Sure. So I guess, you know, the other interesting thing to me is you're, you're going through all of this while you're running your own IT company. Yes. <laughs> it's hard enough owning a business. Now you're going through all of this other stuff. Talk a little bit about sort of that process. Well, it was you kind of put on two different hats and that's kind of, I think how you have to do it. And again, also, I think therapy is very helpful with this because when you compartmentalize things, you compartmentalize today, I'm going to, you know, I've got my business to deal with. And tonight I have to deal with this, you know, mental issue, um, mentally meaning like in my own head, I have to like parse out what I'm going to do. And somehow they marched along in cadence together to, get through a lot of the problems. Like I started my business in 97. I say I went through the dot bomb and it's an IT confer, con consulting firm, the dot bomb, 9-11, the great recession, now COVID. And along there was outsourcing and so many things that could have just shredded my business to death. But what I've learned through this process even is just keep looking forward, keep looking forward. Don't let anything hit you in the head on the way there. And I always laugh. I can never remember the names of these game shows that are like on ABC at night, but the ones where they're, they're hopping from ball to ball and things are coming around to knock them off their ledge or the ball or knocks them in the water. I can't remember the name of that show, but I always say, I'm look, I got to watch out for the big Q-tip that's going to swing around and knock me off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you keep, you just have to keep ducking and, and, and keep just, you without it without work without money you're in much worse shape than if you you know succumb to the the whims of your oh my god i'm depressed i can't do this 
I think maybe helping me because I own my own business and realized that my own weaknesses and strengths, that I was able to like march my way through it at my own pace. Nobody was, no boss of mine was beating me up. Right. And interestingly enough, just two weeks ago, I, I've become involved and in, we have a local chapter for the NGLCC called Three Rivers Business Alliance. It's our first LGBT chapter in Pittsburgh. And I have a client that I've worked with for years. I've known these people, all of them for years. I've never mentioned that I'm an LGBT owned business. I didn't have to, we were just colleagues from long ago. And all of a sudden I got a call the other day from their diversity and inclusion director, like, hey, you know, we would like to get you on board our diversity and inclusion group. You know, have you been certified through the LGBT uh, or through the NGLCC? I'm like, yes. And all of that just kind of slipped out the door. It was, it, when I say slipped out, I'm like, you know, I've never said anything to them. They know I didn't have to. It wasn't the reason we were doing business together. It was a compliment. Had that happened to me 10 years ago, I might have been mortified. Hmm. I seriously might have been mortified. But you know what? With, with companies now having diversity inclusion directives, you know, we, we, the LGBT community, are in a good space for helping these companies diversify their own businesses and bring in diverse people for their business because that's what their directive is now. So, you know, that is also pulling the community into, into everyday life where employees are being talked to saying, you know what, we are doing this. You're either on board with us or you're not. I mean, how many years ago would that have been like, you know, oh my God, the employees would say, well, I'm going to quit if you hire that person. Right. And that has happened. Now they're the employers are like, well, then leave because you're not, you're no longer, you know, the type of person we would like on board. We want a diverse and inclusive, you know, uh, employee right. base. Yeah, very interesting. So yes. where did the impetus for writing this book come in? Because there's still to this day no other resources to help people like us, mm. to people that were married. I still look, I look all the time on Google. They are often books written by maybe a spouse that that had a husband or wife that was gay. But no book about multiple people coming out and their multiple stories, because none of us are the same. We're all different. We have different spouses. Six out of eight of us have children. So how did our children, um, you know, come along? One of the women in my book, um, she, I finally met her sons at their wedding. She married her spouse. Um, it was two weekends ago. And it was, a, again, going back to like a wedding. I'm like I'm at this lesbian wedding, which didn't seem weird. I remember going to my first weddings, which seemed to be weird. There was a weird like vibe about it. Now it's like, everybody's happy. Everybody's just, you know, it's being normal. And her sons are much older now. Um, so I got to meet them and it was just, it kind of like, like closed up a loop of something that I hadn't been able to do. Um, and, and she like grew up, away from the Pittsburgh area in a more, even more closed society. So she had to do a lot of things to get herself into a spot where, you know, her children weren't taken away from her because she was a lesbian. Mm -hmm. If it came out, a lot of people still have to do. And again, you know, middle America, we, you know, the us East coasters, West coast, call them flyover States, you know, they're not even close to that. So a lot of people, again, reading my book would say, you know what, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, one of the one of the friends of mine whose father he read the book and he told me his father committed suicide because, mm. you know, he was in that situation where there was no means for him to understand that he was not alone. And he chose to end his life because, you know, he was felt like he was just at a, you know, at a place where he needed to do that because he couldn't come out, you know, sadly. And so I hope that the book you know, again, it, the reason I wrote it was to help people realize that you're not alone, you know, and it does come on a Kindle version. So you don't have to hide the paperback copy under your <laughs> No tearing the cover off, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Because <laughs> people ask me, what happens, you know, how are they going to hide the book? I'm like, well, there's a Kindle version. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, things like that, finding the book is, is what someone needed to have happen right. to, to, to break through that. So, you know, I, you know, there, life, you know, we have these events in life that move us along somehow, some way that some divine intervention, if there is such a thing, if you believe in that, that move us in the right direction for us to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, it, it's interesting that you just said that because you know, it, it, um, it, 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 and things move us along so that we can be happy no matter if we're talking about, you know, the issue of coming out after having been married or being older and, and finding yourself, you know, single after a long relationship or yeah. whatever. It's, it's funny. I've, uh, when you just said that it just clicked in for me, you know, it, I've been dating a gal now for about a year and uh, <clears throat> I, I, I've said to all my friends, I think I finally found my person. It only took me 57 years, you know, yeah, right. uh, after having been in a 20 year relationship. And, and then the, the most recent was, was five. It was like, you know, you get to that point where it's like, what in the world is wrong with me, you know, kind of thing. And uh, so it's, it's interesting. And, and interestingly enough, um, you know, we have, we committed, we're not, the marriage thing is not something that she's interested in, which is cool. Uh, you know, it's, it is what it is, right? Um, you know, you, you find your person and you find out at, at 57, 58 that, you know, you, you're willing to change paradigms to have what you want, you know, um, kind of thing. But it's interesting because as you're talking about this, um, she happens to be somebody who was married. Um, and uh, has two kids and now has grandkids and, and a, a brandy new one, as a matter of fact. And so it's, it's been fun for me to watch that process, having not, you know, had kids, uh, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the, the process. But it's, it's an interesting. And when I think back, you know, I've, I have friends that I grew up with that, you know, got married and then came out. And so um, as, as my brain is moving, as you're talking, it's like, wow, I actually know more people than, than I thought when I, when we originally started having this conversation, you know, uh, my former partner um, had two kids or three kids, I'm sorry, um, when she moved in with, when we moved in together. And yeah. so it's just an interesting, and you know, it's an interesting dynamic too, having just come out of the dating world, the number of people who, you know, will say like, even on their dating profiles, you know, if you have kids or whatever, like I'm not interested in it, which is always interesting to me because I'm like, what does one have to do with the other? Well, I had, when I first came out, I had people, guys would say, you know, you have kids. I don't want to be bothered with you. And the, the thing that you're talking about right now made me think about something that, you know, if you're a, a person that was married and has children, don't assume, and I say this with, with all red exclamation points around it. Don't assume that the person that you're going to be with is going to want to be a co-parent, you know, and I learned that just because I'm a parent and, and when you're a parent, you have responsibilities that just are there. They're not negotiable. You have a child, who, a sick child that needs to go to the doctor, you know, or needs to go to a baseball game. Those are your, your responsibilities now as a parent. Yeah. Don't think and have the conversation with the person you're with if you have kids, to see if they are interested in particip participating. Right. You know, that's, that can cause a whole other host of problems, especially if you move in together, yeah. like, you know, babysitting, things that youth will, they're like, well, I have something else to do tonight. Well, you're my, you're my partner. Why can't you do this for me? It's because you never had the conversation about co-parenting. Right. Right. <laughs> and I think the flip side of the coin is don't assume that the person isn't, you know, I mean, there were True. other I fully wanted to, to be that role. I fully, you know, was in, engaged and involved with all of their activities. And, and even now, you know, that, that we're not, I mean, I'm still in touch with two of the three of them. And, and yeah. even now, you know, in the, in the new relationship, I mean, one of the things that I most admire uh, is the relationship that she has with her, their adult children and, and yeah. her, her grandchildren. But it's also interesting you know, having conversations with people in our community and they're like, well, you know, are you doing this? Are you doing that? And I'm like, well, you know, both of her kids at the time, you know, live, live are still living with her. And so, you know, it's a different situation and people are like, oh, well, that wouldn't work for me. And I'm like, well, good. That doesn't work for you. It doesn't yeah. mean, you know, and I think we get into this, these situations where, you know, our, we think our paradigm or what we want is, is right for everyone. When in fact, you know, as I found, you know, there are certain things that, you know, you're willing, at least for me, you know, as I've gotten older, that you're willing to flex on that maybe when you were 20, you know, you wouldn't have, but, um, you know, at, at 58, it's like, you know, okay. <laughs> it, 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 all, it falls under the Cinderella story, you know, meet man, meet, meet woman, get married, live happily ever after. Right. They don't fill in the big blanks or the big holes that are missing that, 
you know, you may have multiple partners in your life. And, you know, and, and, and as our souls evolve and we, we change and we want different things, the person we're with, with might not want those same things. Right. And, but we're, there is, that's another area of like, we're not aware of these things happening because, you know, you look at, you know, I hate to say that I look, read obituaries, but married 53 years, married 60 years. I'm like, wonder what went on in those 53 or those 60 years that uh-huh. might've broke them up or how did they get through the things that they got through? And, you know, and a lot of this stuff is also support by family. Yeah. You know, we, again, as I re- relate back to what I was talking about only six years ago, did we start to get married? Like our families and friends who are in the straight world, they don't have a clue how to help LGBT people. Right. They're learning. We're all evolving. We're all learning. So the support system that may help a straight couple get through this, because, you know, they're being supported by other straight couples, is, is, is been there for ever. And now we're starting to get into where there's gay marriages and, you know, gay relationships and a lot of gay relationships may call, may as well call them a marriage. They just haven't gone through a ceremony. They've been together for a while, but, but most people don't know how to support a gay couple, you know, because they just have nothing. They have no reference in their own mind or their lives. But as we get married and as more of these things come up in family conversations, they become knitted in, but it's going to take a while. Yeah. Well, and I think part of the reason they don't, they, they don't know how to support is because they think it's so different than their situation. When in fact, it's not, you know, we deal with the same issues yeah. in our relationships that anyone else does, you know, it's just, uh, yeah. it's no different. I mean, no. um, you know, yeah, we might have different issues because it's two women and two men or, or two men, but you know, the, the issues in and of themselves are the same, right? It's, it's, it's money. It's, it's, you know, struggle with work-life balance. It's all the same issues. It's all yeah. this, you know, it's, it's not, we, we overcomplicate things sometimes. So, well, Michael, this has been, um, I've loved having this conversation with you. So Likewise. tell us, um, tell us how, how we get in touch with you, how we get the book. Okay. Um, again, my name is Michael Testa and I, my website for my book is under uh, michaeljtesta.com. And again, that is Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-J-T-E-S-T-A.com. And my email address is michael.testa at michaeljtesta.com. Um, my book is available online through Amazon. You can get it, both the paper copy, which I find it so interesting in Amazon that they print by demand, on demand. So the book doesn't have to be in stock because they have some printer someplace that's going to whip one up for you right away. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I do speaking engagements as well. I also am available for coaching because I do do a lot of coaching for people that are coming out um, and share with them. Like you and I just had this conversation about, you know, the questions that come up that I can answer. And I not only answer them from a personal standpoint, but because I've talked to so many people that have come out, um, I can answer them from a, a, you know, a standpoint of many people and how they have work through issues, co-parenting, you know, getting along with a spouse that, you know, maybe wants to get married, but you don't want to get married and, you know, all, all different aspects. And, and also, like you said, you know, we're, it, all the problems we have are just the same, but yeah. there's a different label put on them that just needs to be ripped off. Yeah. And Michael, what's the, what's the title of the book? It's called When Opposites No Longer Attract. It's the, the story of eight men and women who came out from a straight marriage. Very good. Very good. Well, this has been amazing. And I certainly appreciate your, your time. And, and uh, it was a great conversation. I hope everybody that's listening enjoyed it. So that's it for today's edition of Queer Profits. Thanks for being here. As always, um, whether you're queer or straight, everybody has these issues, right? As, as we've talked about, we've talked about things that, that everybody has issues with. So um, if you're interested in uh, making more money in your business, we didn't talk specifically a lot about business today, but go to queerprofits.com, download the free report, the three keys to growing your business, getting more clients and making more money. That's there for you as always. Love to hear your questions, comments, and feedback. So uh, if you have those, leave them wherever you're listening to or watching this. Uh, Always love to have those. And as always, the Queer Profits podcast is all about bringing our entire community together for the good of all. And 
and we as business owners have the ability to really do that. So it starts with us bringing each other together, bringing the world together with unity, integration, and acceptance. So I'm Diane Conklin. Until next time, make it a great day. Thanks, Michael. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.